All right, let's get started. Advent of Code with Livebook. Uh, let's first just start with a bit of busy work. This is a day two. We are going to save it. You can't see, but there's a save button behind my face. And there is a directory in here. And day two. So we'll save it. Let's do this. Day two dive. So just to recap, if somebody was not here yesterday, there was a submarine thing. I, we, I think we are piloting a submarine and we are under the ocean and we have to collect stars. And every day in Advent of Code, you collect two stars. So this is the second day they start. Now we need to figure out how to pilot this thing. And I assume this thing is the submarine. It seems like the submarine can take a series of commands like forward, down, or up. Forward increase the horizontal position by X units, down increase the depth, and up decreases the depth. Note that since you are on a submarine, down and up affect your depth, and so they are the opposite result of what you might expect. Down increases the depth, sounds good. The submarine seems to already have a planned course, your puzzle input. You should probably figure out where it's going. For example, forward adds five to our horizontal position, a total of five. After following these instructions, you should have a horizontal position of 15 and a depth of 10. Multiplying these together produces 150. Seems straightforward. Let's do this. Let's go to Livebook. For now, again, let's just copy and paste the input here. This is the input, and then we'll make it fancier later. This is it. I'm going to, to evaluate so we can get the result. And as usual, we're going to start with the input. And the first thing we want to do is that we want to string split it on the new line if you are on windows you may actually want to split on on this we can split on both so it's friendly for everybody wait wait no the inputs are always going to use new lines i think how does i'm almost sure because you're using html inputs it's always a new line you don't have to worry about that but if you're reading from a, fi a file sorry that would be a concern so let's do this first and then we can see that there is a training white space here because there is a training new line so we are going to train that and so far so good we broke each line into each one input we want to parse those instructions right we want to, we want to break it down so what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to map over each line and we want to split each line which is so here is the element that we are going to map on which is each line we want to split it on space. We can try to compute the final depth. I'm going to do everything like pipeline driven again because it was fun yesterday. And then we can change this, try to do different ways, right? So now we have pairs of four and five. There's something else we could do just for example, we could split all new lines in space and that would give these. And then we could use the chunk every from yesterday to put them into lists. That would be another way to go for this. Let's go line by line processing. I think it's more intuitive. We could do it this way. There is, what else can we do? Because we also need to convert those things to integer. So that would be another pass. We could also do this, we match each line in here. So let's do this. Let's pick just one way, right? So we can be forward number, let's use pattern matching. So this is going to be a forward instruction. And then we're going to do a string to integer on the number or it is down and then it's going to be a down instruction and we're going to convert the number or it's going to be up let's go like this oops there's a thing here okay so now we have a, a more straightforward mapping and what we are going to do i have some ideas to change this but let's just get to the final solution and then we can think about ways we can refactor it right so now we have all the instructions if we want to go up and down and we need to compute the final result. And we know there are two things that we want to track, right? We want to compute the depth and it calls horizontal position. So I'm just going to go with position, okay? We know now that for each pair that we have, we are going to have something like this. So there is a lot of duplication in this solution. So I'm not enjoying it very much, but, but that's fine. So forward is going to change the position. We are going to get the value we are going to change. And then we have the depth and the position. So now you're going to reduce. You're going to go over the whole list that we've built, right? Of forward, down, forward, down. And we are going to, the depth isn't changed. Oh, our initial position is zero. Let's do this to make, uh, and our initial depth is zero. I think both of them start with zero, right? Yes. Depth and position. So this is going to 
increase the position by value and then we have down and down so he has a note he has a note down adds five to your depth right so down is going to increase the depth but not touch the position and up is going to decrease the depth but not touch the position after all of these we are going to have the final result which is going to be the depth and the position which we want to match on and oh i should increase a little bit the font right i'm sorry about that depth and the position and this should be the result which is 150. again i'm not liking the solution very much but let's make sure it works if you have any feedback feel free to to drop in the chat so this is part one what we're going to do as yesterday is let's create a new section actually part one this is set up and i want to install kino again for us to have the inputs i can just paste the actual input and if i remember correctly it's kino so right now i'm using the main branch of livebook so those features some of those features are using are not released yet we want to release a new livebook version really really soon but for now i have to use the main branch of kino so this should install it and to have an input we're going to use kino input text area if i remember correctly text area okay uh, please add your input so now we get the text area we are going to move this to the text area oh we need to save the input uh, text area let's call it input and here we're going to do kino input read so we read the value of the text area so now we made it a little bit more dynamic the result there is a bug i need to reevaluate this so wait that should have been reevaluated, or maybe not no that's good that's correct okay i can use the list as the accumulator of reduce then pipe to num product yeah it could 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 work so we have the text area so let's get my puzzle input and let's put it here let's execute this again i hope i hope this is just <laughs> uh, uh it's funny that it just added something to the 150. <laughs> It makes you feel like something went wrong. Uh, hopefully not. Let's see. Uh, that's the right answer. Okay, it worked. All right. Let's see part two. In addition to your position, F, I also need to track a third value, the aim. Okay, so there is a third value. Okay, I'm going to refactor before I go to the third value, before I go to part two. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm finding it a little bit repetitive that we have to, maybe it's fine, but I'm finding it a little bit repetitive. So what I'm going to do is that when we map here, we already map to to the change we want to see we could do the the reduce at once as well right we could merge this map and this reduce into a single thing and i think that could even be clearer but let's at least keep a little bit separated okay so forward no change to depth and change here down is change to the depth but no change to the position and this is a negative thing and we don't change here so now it's a matter of get the depth, depth change with the position change and then we are going to do this depth change with uh, position change i don't know i'm not using tab uh, as so yeah does anyone think this is better or worse or the same i'm wondering it's worse okay so let's go back i think it's better i think i think it's a little bit less you know i kind of understand that i'm fusing the things together but i feel like converting to the atom four just to match on it right after we could also do that right so so let's go ahead and do the whole thing let's do the the fusion here which would be something like this and then that position i'm going to break this into lines we have the formatter let me see if i can get the formatter to run uh, it's a different shortcut than my editor hold on it's this all right so this is plus depth position this is plus depth position this is position plus depth and this is a reduce and still the same yeah so what i don't like about this is that we are doing the parsing and then the processing at the same time you know mixed feelings but for the simple problem it doesn't make a big difference right but for more complex problems i would be a little bit skeptical of mixing all of the parsing 
and of the processing in a single step. Somebody is asking about, so this thing, Kino input text area, it's only working on Livebook main. So if you're using the, the release version of Livebook, if you mouse over here, you would see input here, but we changed on main, which are going to be released soon. Oh, that's a great call. Yeah, it, it does run Docker containers. So if you install the fly command line, uh, you can ask it to use the edge container from Livebook and you should get this. But we're going to release soon, I, I'm sure. All right, let's go to part two, part two, and let's read it. Uh, the plan course doesn't seem to make any sense. You find some marine manual and discover that the process actually is like more complicated. In addition, as is real life, right? In addition to horizontal position and depth, we also need to track third value, aim, which also starts at zero. The command also means something entirely different than you first thought. Down increases your aim by X units. Up decreases your aim by X units for those two things, increase your horizontal position by X and increase your depth by your aim multiplied by x. Okay, oh yeah, so it's a aim, right? It makes sense, it makes sense. This is really nice. Do I have my original input in here uh, somewhere? I'll just copy it from the article and, and we are going to, or are we going to do it live? And no, I, <laughs> I don't want to brute force it. So let's start day two. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Yes, I want to delete it. Elixir, so let's copy the input. I'm going to copy and paste the code. So I think like now it's kind of worse mixing everything, but since we've made up our mind, let's go with this, right? So let's move the parsing out. This will be fine, but let's move it out, right? So there's like this duplication that I'm not a big fan of, so, but it's fine, okay. So, and now we have three things. We have depth, position, and aim, which also starts at zero. And up and down, just change the aim, right? So it's not going to change this. It's just going to aim plus this. So we can keep it as one line. I'm going to copy and paste because I'm lazy and uh, it's going to change the aim. And I may be off on the signal here, but maybe not. And then we say that this and forward is going to be the depth aim multiplied by the number plus this and then the aim is the same. And I think this is it. Here we can ignore the aim. And if this is good, then this is 900. Aim does not exist here. We need to have a guard in here. Uh, okay, 900. This is all good. So now I can go grow back that line. I can stop overriding the input and that should be the result of, this is the same input that we have here, right? We can just reuse. Uh, maybe we can actually move this up because it's not part. Wait, what? What did I do? Is that a bug? Wait, uh, let's move this up. No, this is correct, yes. We move the input as part of setup so we don't make it part of the solution. This is a little bit clearer and this should be my answer. So let's try it, part two. It worked. All right, cool. So this is kind of what we ended up with. Again, not a big fan of the solution, but I think it's like kind of the fastest way we can go about it. Not a big fan that we are mixing parsing with the other things. So instead we can do some things. We could try recursion, but I think recursion in this thing is not going to be very different because it's simply a reduce. It's not going to be as interesting as yesterday because we could use a pivot or we would look ahead. There is not none of that here. Oh, this is a great point. I sometimes feel that all logic inside the pipeline is unreadable and it is common to move some logic to a function to increase readability. Yes, in practice, I would not write this code. I would I would break it apart. So yeah, so I just want to be very clear. I'm not super happy about this code. I would possibly change it in a couple different ways. But yeah, I would at least move this to a function like a navigate submarine, for example, that receives the current entry and break it apart. <laughs>